This morning, I want to talk about the African National Congress, the ANC. I want to talk about the apartheid government. And I want to talk about where we find ourselves in 2021. A couple of days ago, Umtogo Zisintumba was shot dead, um, I believe in Bramfontein, at the Wits students' protest for fees. Uh, he was an innocent bystander. He was passing by. Don't even think he's a student, you know. Um, and he was shot by these cops who were meant to be using rubber bullets. Shot and he died. And country was shocked. Country was very sad. You know, and a lot of people were very angry. Um, understandably so. Angry for a couple of reasons. Number one, students are still marching for fees. Even though they've marched for so long. President, uh, Ex-President Jacob Zuma had said, look, um, fees are going to be free and they're going to find a way to, for them to work. And it looks like President Saul Ramaphosa has gone and has reversed that. Um, the other really sad thing is the fact that we now have a black government, generally a black government, an ANC-led government. And it looks like it is not much different than the apartheid government. If you look at the story of uh, Ndumba being shot and killed, if you look at the fact that students were marching for free education, which the ANC had promised pre-1994. If you think about President Cyril Ramaphosa's involvement in, I think, about 40 miners who were shot and killed in Marikana at Lonman Mine. If you look at the people that died uh, at Life is Dimen, at a, at a bogus mental institution. Um, you look at poverty, you look at the corruption, 500 billion uh, in aid, which is said to have disappeared. Uh, I'd like to think a lot of it was used, but there was corruption. And that's true. Stories about state capture, PIC commission, uh, about dodgy deals at the PIC. Um, and then you look at the minority of black leaders who are living very well, who are rich, you know, amidst so much poverty in this country yet. And for a lot of people, it feels like life has gotten worse since apartheid. It feels like during apartheid, at least there were jobs. You know, there was some sense of even though we're not really in power, the country is sort of stable and we kind of, kind of know where we're going. So people are very angry and very upset. Sorry, I forgot to mention um, at the time when it was reported, I know they didn't send out more reports then. And I feel like it's probably media propaganda. But about nine people were, were killed last year during the lockdown for supposedly violating lockdown regulations. A lot of cops killed people. They were abusing people. There are videos out there. Um... And that wasn't really addressed as succinctly as it, as, it, as it should have been. I'm making this video because I, I demand of us to be smarter, to apply our minds much better to what's happening realistically out there. Because it's very easy to, to get upset and to lose your mind and to blame the whole world. But I think at some point we need to look internally. We need to look at our families. We look at, need to look at our communities and see how we can do things better. One of the things I've been saying lately with everyone blaming the ANC with what's happened is it's actually, and look, I'm guilty of this as well. It's actually unfair to blame the entire ANC for when one cop decides to do something stupid, for when one teacher decides to beat up a learner, for when one nurse ill treats a patient. It's very unfair to blame the entire ANC for that. Even worse, you might find that some of these bad people, the cops, the nurses, the teachers, etc., might find that they don't even vote ANC. They don't care about the ANC. But the ANC still catches the bulk of um, the frustration. Understandably so, then they're in leadership and they should do something about it. We need to at some point begin taking blame for our actions. As individuals, as families, as communities. If I go out there and I decide to become a cop and I decide to shoot an innocent person, that has to fall on me. And I think South Africans, by and large, no longer seek proper justice and retribution from the real perpetrators. If that was the case, we were going to find out who the cop is. And the guy's family members and the community were going to kill him. That's justice, in my opinion. Making sure that the person who did the wrong thing is punished. If not him, you find out who sent him. Who is his superior that said, go out there and do what you're doing. Hold that person accountable. Which station does he come from? 
Then you start looking at things like who is in charge of police in that entire region, all the way up to Pekitele, and then obviously, and ask about the systems. Because I think another very frustrating thing, uh, another thing that frustrates South Africans, is the fact that it looks like our government is not really good at making sure that justice is effected. I've experienced our courts, our courts and our legal system, and I know that it's very weak. I've dealt with a lot of our police, and I know how much they drag their feet, making excuses like there is no cop car, you know, trying to make sure that they close your case as quickly as possible. Because they're lazy, because they're entitled, like the rest of the country. During the apartheid regime, or after the apartheid regime, we, we blamed white people for everything. And we blamed every single white person for what was happening, you know. And it was happening because of a small group of men that were setting laws and making sure that black people are oppressed, exploited, that they were having their land taken from them, beaten, killed. We blamed all white people for that. Today we have the ANC government <laughs> and we're not blaming all black people. We're only blaming the ANC. It's the same thing. That's meant to make you think that maybe during apartheid a lot of white people weren't in control. Maybe a lot of them were frustrated and unfortunately they didn't have social media to vent, to have hashtags. So we made them all complicit in everything that was happening. However, we're not holding all black people complicit to what's happening with the ANC-led government as well. Second thing I want to say is that the ANC doesn't run this country alone. When we talk about government, parliament at least, the MPs, about 400 of them, 57% of them are ANC, 20% of them are the Democratic Alliance or the DA, and about 10% are the EFF. So I find it very odd, but I'm reminded that they're just politicians and they're a fucking pile of shit. But I find it very odd that the EFF and the DA will complain about the ANC as if they are not in government. Julius Floyd and Lozi, John Steen Hayes and Pumzile Van Dam, all these people are in parliament. They make up government. The Western Cape is run by the DA. Parts of the Eastern Cape are run by the DA. Parts of KZN are run by the IFP. Parts of Gauteng are run by the DA and the EFF. In certain parts, there's, there's, um, there's governments that work um, in collaboration. But they never want to take accountability. It's always about blaming the ANC. When you blame the ANC, the ANC blames the apartheid government. Or they blame white, minority cap uh, white monopoly capital. We refuse to take responsibility and accountability for our actions as individuals, as families, as communities. In South Africa, we've got, or at the last elections in 2019, we had about 26 million eligible voters out of 57 million South Africans. Of the 26 million, only 17 million ended up voting. And the ANC was voted for by 57% by, by of these people, just over half. If we're looking at half of 17 million, we're looking at eight and a half million people. So let's say about nine, nine million people voted for the ANC. Nine million out of 57 million. Those 9 million people decide who gets to run this country. For everyone else, for almost 50 million people that didn't vote or didn't vote for the ANC. On top of that, the 9 million people that voted for the ANC, bulk of them were not voting for Saul Ramaphosa. They were not voting for corruption. They were not voting for looting, for maladministration. They were voting for grants. They were voting for free homes. They were voting for free health care, free education, children that, that eat at schools every day. We've got 19 million grant recipients in South Africa every single month. 18,000 free schools where 7 million kids get to eat every day. We've got over 2,500 free clinics and we've got free hospitals. And we've built about 5 million RTPs, free homes. At an average of 3 people in each household, that's about 15 million South Africans that have been housed for free. The NC government has put in so much work and done a lot. Places that didn't have flushable toilets have flushable toilets. They have electricity. They have running water. They have tarred roads. The ANC has done that. It's done amazing and its marketing is so bad because all we ever see is what the media pushes, which is just the corruption and the maladministration. We've seen with those Zuma being bashed, how many people have now spoken up. I got bursaries because of Zuma. I got this because of Zuma. I managed to get this achieved because of the Zuma administration. 
things that the ANC has failed to sell to the country, the ANC and the government it works with, which also includes other political parties. If we're going to keep blaming the whole world for everything that's wrong, we're never going to get anything done. With the same corrupt ANC, with the same useless DA, with the same flip-flopping EFF, with the same apartheid government we used to have, there are black people that have excelled, that have said, my life, my destiny is in my hands. I will make sure that I vote right. I will make sure that I hold my councillor, that I hold my mayor, that I hold my premier, that I hold my, my members of parliament accountable. I will vote when I need to vote. I will sign petitions. I will speak out. I will make sure that I buy from businesses that I know are ethical and fund the right people in power. I will send my kids to the right schools and I will make sure I follow up on their education. I will look for jobs for my kids or I will create jobs for my kids or I'll befriend people that can hire my children so that we can have a great household and make a good income. If someone does my family wrong, I will go and get armed and get a gun and I'll defend my family. I'll learn how to fight. I'll make sure I have security. I'll make sure that if justice has to be served, I'll get a lawyer or I'll represent myself and I'll hold the lawyers and the judge accountable and if I'm not getting justice, I'll appeal. Afri Forum's gotten this right and they are leading Afrikaans people. Give us money every month and we will fight for you. Other smaller groups, if you look at the Jews, if you look at the Indians, they've got leadership, they've got people that are fighting for them. Black people wait for the ANC as if they're waiting for Jesus to come back, to fix everything. And as soon as you wait for someone else to fix everything, you are disempowering yourself. You are taking the power away from you. And the ANC doesn't mind because some of these clowns at the top, Tito Mboweni, Peggy Tele, Praveen Kordan, Naledi Pando, Sir Ramaphosa, some of these clowns up there, they don't actually care. You'll keep giving them their, your votes because, like I said, you want the things that the ANC comes with, the freebies, the NISFAS, etc. But then it unfortunately comes with some of these clowns that are leading us today. NISFAS has cut down on money. There's no money. The money's not going to come. Blame the ANC, yes, their budgets are, are, you know, they're not looking after their budget, there's corruption. But how many of you have received NISFAS money and you're now working and you haven't paid it back? How many of you are actually making sure that you join government, you become politically active? How many of you are trying to raise educational funds on your own, your own family, your own community, saying, look, guys, let's contribute 20 rand a month, 100 rand a month, so that some of the kids in the area can go and study and come back and plow back into our community? But you constantly want to look at the NC and blame everyone else but yourself. We blamed all white people for the apartheid government when it was a minority of rogue people. Today we refuse to blame all black people for, for the ANC-led government. And now we blame the entire ANC when there's a few people that are rogue. And now when one cop kills a person, instead of isolating that cop and ensuring that there's justice, we want to blame everyone else because it's nice to vent. It's nice to write hashtags. I was in Bromfontein yesterday and I was watching EFF kids marching, destroying property, destroying property, hooliganism, threatening other people, innocent bystanders on the streets. But they claim that they, they're fighting for what's right. That's bullshit. This country's lost its marbles. We're currently on autopilot. Our leaders are so weak. We're currently on autopilot in our communities. We don't know who the community leaders are. We're on autopilot in our families. Who's the head of your family? Who's running your family? What's your family's five-year, 10-year, 50-year, 100-year plan? Economically, socially, where do you guys want to live as a family? What do you want to build? What's your legacy? And we're on autopilot in terms of ourselves. Who's leading you? What's happening in your life? Are you exercising? Are you working hard? Are you saving money? Are you building things? Do your children know what the family plan is? We need to really stop this blame game. We need to hold ourselves accountable. We need to hold specific leaders and specific individuals accountable. We need to ensure justice. And we need to, sh we need to make sure that we're driving the South Africa that we dream of as a people. That's my thoughts, Penuel, the Black Pen. Hope you guys will have a great Friday. Cheers.